So here's one that I remembered very well, but if you'd played me the theme tune and asked me to guess the show, I'd never put these two together. And now for the cha-cha-cha. Before she started running around getting the willies put up her in supposedly haunted locations, in the laughable and ridiculous Most Haunted, Yvette Fielding was an 80s kids TV star in a show called Seaview. Seaview being the name of the guest house that Yvette's character Sandra lived in, with Mother, whose first name I can't hear said anywhere, so she's Mrs Shelton, played by Maggie Olleranshaw, the father is played by David Goodison, and this sometimes hilarious kid here is played by Aaron Brown, his name is George. The show is set in Blackpool and it's not quite as good as I remembered it, to be honest. It started on the 5th of October 1983 on BBC One and was on at 10 past five, just after news round actually. The synopsis is hardly anything to get excited about. There are unarmed battles and eternal conflicts in even the nicest of families. Sea View takes a humorous look at the domestic struggles which lie at the heart of the Shelton family. Dad and Mum run a guest house in Blackpool and their children George and Sandy attend dancing and elocution classes at a local school. Sandy wants to be a star and her mother is right behind her. Oh, what about this one? A sort of sitcom for kids with cheerful mum, dopey dad and a couple of clever youngsters all involved in the running of Seaview Hotel. The mum is not cheerful in this. She's a, she's a twat. Mind you, your George isn't really putting his heart into it. Is it really worth his coming, do you think? Well, I... Oh, do... Mrs Bovis and Angela. Hello. Did you hear that, George? George? I don't have to come anymore. And who danced with Sandra? I don't mind. No, George, you're coming whether you like it or not. A man should be able to dance. Why? He should, and there's an end of it. You will notice everything's very brown. You know, when you think back to the 80s and these websites about the 80s and these these videos that the younger people make about the 80s and it's all neon and pink and green and geometry, you know. It was brown. The 80s were brown, people. I've only been in Blackpool two weeks. I wouldn't put anything past you. Episode 1, First Steps, introduces us to the very brown world, like I say, of Seaview. As Sandra is having a dance lesson with her brother George and George is all left feet... His mum makes him practice with his sister, the sister being an aspiring performer who needs to keep on practicing. We find out that the family have been living in Blackpool for two weeks and are still decorating the new guest house. The opening of the guest house is imminent, Tuesday apparently, but we don't know what date is today. The dad was a supermarket manager before being made redundant and the payout assumedly was used to buy the guest house. George spots the boy sat on a wall outside and when the boy notices he's been seen, he does a runner. Now, the mum's much more of a bitch than I remember. She tells George he can't do anything like a normal human being. She's really snobby and horrible. Got you working, George. Just. I've pitted all that. You can't do anything like a normal human being. There's a big deal made about Sandra getting a new dress and George wants to be bought something new as well, so he asks for a computer. And Dad says they're too expensive. Mum says he doesn't need a computer. And Dad offers him a quid to keep on helping with the decorating. Be a while saving up for a computer that way, pal. There's a bit of an argument about Dad offering George a quid versus the cost of a new dress. These two really should get a divorce if this sort of thing sets them off. There's this big audition coming up for a tomato soup commercial, which is causing all sorts of tension, as it is. The family all go together, and whilst the audition's proceeding, George is playing the arcade machines, and the lad from the yard pops over to talk to him. His name is James. Now the casting director spots these two lads and he tells them they've got just the stuff he's looking for. Now my jaded mind thought that this was going to be some sort of a Stranger Danger side story, but it turns out he actually is the director. He just happens to look like someone who belongs on a register somewhere. My mum will be going spare. Relax, enjoy yourself. Superstar and beckons. I can hear her now. Where's George? What's he doing? He's not doing anything. I don't fit in, that's the trouble. I can't be what my mum wants me to be, dancing and stuff. So she expects me to be a mischief. Dad, too. What's he like? He was a supermarket manager before he was made redundant. And he don't understand because I've no ambitions. None at all? No. 
Sandra gets up on stage just as Dad's complaining that this is nothing but a cattle market. Well, they did used to call auditions cattle calls back in the day. And Sandra sings a song whilst James and George decide to do a runner to the arcade where James's brother works, where they'll be able to play games for free and the family don't seem to notice that he's not with them. And the mother, listen how the mother greets him. What a family, bloody hell. Sandra manages to get a part as a face in the crowd in the advert and George has a heart-to-heart with her about the whole situation. And there ends an episode, and then... And there ends episode one, and check the cracking closing theme tune. Sorry, I'm late. Where have you been? It's a long story. Your dinner's in the oven, probably ruined by now. Hands? Well, don't you want to know how your sister did in the auditions? The guest house opens in episode two, and Sandra spots a Greenpeace demonstration at which she picks up a leaflet. Dad buys Mum a fur coat, which Sandra takes great exception to because of the animal cruelty she's learned about, and Mum thinks Greenpeace is a crackpot group, so they argue about that as well. The subscription is a tenner for Greenpeace, so to raise the money, George, Sandra and James organise a smelly dog contest, which, of course, ends in complete chaos. Episode 3 sees the parents poorly, so the kids have to run the guest house. George takes the opportunity to turn one room into an arcade, somehow, on the premise of raising more money for Greenpeace. Two blokes turn up to lay a patio and leave for the day while the cement dries. The kids who were playing the arcade machines traipse all over the newly laid patio, which George then tries to fix. Episode 4, Sandra spots a Human League concert poster where the tickets are, get this... Four pound a go. Imagine that. So more money-raising shenanigans abound as she tries to get the cash together. The parents refuse to pay the kids for the work they do in the guest house, so they go on a go slow, a sort of protest strike. Eventually, it does lead to an actual strike where they protest against child exploitation in the dining room in front of all the guests. They end up with a contract of work drawn up and Sandra gets to go to the concert. George saves his money for a computer that he so desperately wants. Episode 5 sees the police looking for George's friend James, who is presently dressed in a very dandy set-up as part of some sort of travelling advertisement. Sandra's got a new boyfriend called Jason, who she met at the concert, and this causes issues now with her being a contracted worker because she can't just bugger off on a date anymore. Seems James's mum and brother have disappeared, leaving him home alone. The electricity's been cut off and he's got no food. George agrees to let him stay with them. Now the parents find out eventually and Dad deals with it all by going to the police and explaining the entire situation. He then drives James to his house to pick up his clothes and etc where James finds a postcard from his mum saying she's on her way back any day. Dad confronts James's mum about it when she turns up at two in the morning to collect him from the guest house. The police have a word with her as well. The final episode of series one has Sandra auditioning for a band. Billy from Bread is in this look. The band are crap, to be honest. They have a gig at the weekend and all seems to be going all right. But then just as they're about to start at the club, the manager comes in and finds out that Sandra's only 14. He throws her out because she's too young. The episode ends in a very, very silly way. Don't be daft, mister. She's a singer. You should have thought of that. Come on, off you go. And don't come trying to sneak back in again because I'll chuck you out again. Hop it. He can't do that. He has. Duncan Harley's done that for me. He won't give me a chance. He hardly said anything. It's not fair. Come on, Sandra. I've been a star. I could have really done something. Just because that man told me I wasn't old enough. Let's go home. I hate being a kid. We'll come back. He'd never let us. No, not tomorrow. When we're old enough, can't stop us growing up. We're tomorrow. We're the brightest thing around. We're tomorrow. There's no way to keep us down. We're We're tomorrow. tomorrow. And we're going to change things now. (laughs) 
Series 2 is largely more of the same, except all the female cast's hairdos have changed significantly. George's voice drops an octave as well. You knew that. Yeah. The series ends with Sandra's boyfriend cheating on her at a party. George consoles her and offers to go down to the party with her to be her dance partner. A throwback to episode one, where we first met the pair. It's watchable. It's nothing amazing, you know. A nice little trip down memory lane, if nothing else. Do you remember this one? Let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what you thought of it. Bye for now. (laughs) 